when we were doing this in the very very early days i started started practicing rcm in the 1980s and you know it was applied to whole assets and you know everything were everything was done and as we as we moved forward it became an extremely expensive exercise because you can imagine that you go through a very very systematic process on every single um, maintainable item of equipment uh, and that is brutally expensive because you need to have specialists you need to have um, data scientists reliability engineers and then you have your discipline engineers i mean I, I used to work with teams of eight eight to twelve engineers for a year uh, doing doing whole assets as time progressed what we realized was you know we needed to really sort of stand back and say we'll take a look at take a look at what we were doing so what we were then doing is we were saying well we need to focus on um, what you might call bad actors, which are items of equipment that are either failing on a regular basis or were safety critical or production critical. So we started to turn the focus on specific items of uh, um, or specific packages of equipment so that we could optimize, optimize the maintenance. Now, the thing about RCM is that you're focusing your attention on safety and production so you have to be very very careful that certainly selling rcm you do get a anything between a 20 and 40 percent reduction in your overall um activity activity load however what you have to realize is that in some instances or some pieces of equipment you may actually increase the amount of maintenance and inspection that you do on a particular item of equipment so at over overall the aggregate is a reduction because you're focusing and you're optimizing your your activity um, however in some cases you may say see increases uh, overall you see a, see a genuine decrease so how how it helps is it's a more focused effort that you're getting and you're focusing on the important items of equipment for your particular asset.